Okay, so hi everyone. Uh, <clears throat> again, my name is Ola Benhar. I lead the developer relations team at Google for payments and Google Wallet. But I also have a um, broader role where I represent uh, Google, including Google Wallet, but also Android and Chrome on the Open Wallet Foundation, which Google recently joined. Um, Google has a long-standing um, history of supporting open ecosystems. Um, I truly believe that I think, especially for a topic like Google Wall, like wallets in general, digital identities, um, it's very important that we work together um, as an industry, um, together with governments and nonprofit organizations to build solutions um, that are truly um, secure, comprehensive, interoperable, um, to make it meaningful for everyone. Because I think um, this is something that's going to impact us all. Uh, and first of all, we're also consumers, and I think we're all playing a role in how this ecosystem is going to look like in a couple of years from now. Um, so uh, today, I'm very happy to announce um, a code contribution. So we decided to contribute the identity credential library, um, which is used by many commercial wallets, including Google Wallet. Um, it is actually a set of libraries um, and uh, wallet in, in example apps for a wallet and a mobile verifier uh, for real world um, identity. Um, we have the maintainer actually, David Zutin, uh, couldn't be here with us, but he recorded a video to talk more about the library um, to give you an idea of what it is and, and what you can do um, if you're working on. Uh, uh, digital wallets or digital identities. So, Thorsten, I think you have the video and uh, we can play it now and then uh, I'll say a few words at the end. So first of all, thanks a lot for your contribution. Absolutely. <laughs> <Very happy. laughs> and I had the pleasure to talk to David last week and he's really passionate about uh, what he does and um, yeah, then let's, let's watch the presentation. Hi, I'm David Sufan. I work for Google in the Android platform security team on hardware back security. The past four or five years, I've been working on real world identity, specifically uh, MDOC MDL in the ISO SC17 working group 10 working group, where we published ISO 1813 part five for MDL and mobile driving licenses. To that end, at Google, we worked, I worked on creating a library and integrating MDLs and MDoc into Android. And uh, I'm gonna do a presentation about that. Let me just bring up the window. All right, so here it is, um, status and roadmap. So first of all, everything in this presentation is just current ideas and thinking. There's a lot that already is released. There are also some things we haven't. So don't depend on anything until it's released. So, so what is it? The Identity Credential Library is a library, a set of libraries actually, and example apps for real world identity. The initial focus was MDL and MDoc according to ISO 1813.5. And also related standards like 1813.7, the 23220 series, and even things that are named docs like uh, verifiable credentials. It's been hosted at GitHub for a while, um, I think 2019 or 2020, and it's available under the Apache 2 license, like most other Android code. It's all written in uh, mostly Java. We're converting things into, slowly converting things into Kotlin. The library implements on-device provisioning, uh, storage, presentment, verification of MDL and MDOX. Uh, and an emphasis that it implements the on-device parts, things like provisioning, as we'll see in the next slide, involves the issuer, obviously. Um, so we don't do anything for the network protocol or user proofing. Uh, it's, it's not really standardized yet. There's some, some early steps, but for now our library just does whatever you need to interface with the device. Um, the library uses hardware back key store and remote attestation, which is important because it gives you strong guarantees that the private key material never leaves the device, which is important for anti-cloning. So you can't just steal someone's MDL. Like you would need the key, which is in, in hardware back key store. 
The library itself is, is quite production quality. Um, I've been to all but one of the MDL test events organized by uh, by by the uh, working group, 10 ISO group. It's used in several production wallets, uh, many of them certified by UL, including Google Wallet, which is is the, is created by a team, not my team, but I work closely with them. Uh, the library has strong focus on testability. Um, so there's a bunch of unit tests and also uh, manual tests for things that aren't easy to, to unit test. It's actually not restricted to Android. Um, it's separated into two libraries. We call them Identity and Identity Android. Um, and it's also later versions are not dependent on MDL. The MDL and MDoc are split out into separate separate things, and the core can be reused for other credential formats. So, so let's first look at the overview of of the ecosystem and in, in where you will use this. It's it's called the three party model, where you have a holder that carries a credential around. That's just by carrying a plastic card. You have the issuer of the credential, that could be the DMB, in my case, the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, the registered motor vehicles. And there's a verifier that the holder wishes to present the credential to. That could be the TSA, it could be an alcohol store, or a bank, or someone. So, so the library implements the in-person presentation protocol, including all the Bluetooth, QR code, and NFC bits. Um, it implements, it does not implement the issuance protocol. It only implements a part of it device side. You need to implement it. Um, we don't implement server retrieval, which is an option in 18.13 part five, um, but it's not very good for privacy. So our library does not currently support it. Um, the library itself, it's used inside the wallet app. The wallet app is part of the OS. The OS is part of the device. And to do things securely, you need to do things outside the OS. You need to use secure hardware. In our case, Android, Android Keystone. Um, so this is kind of the context of where the library is used on the holder side. It's also used on the verifier side in the MDoc Reader app. Um, to implement the other part of the transaction in the device retrieval protocol, which is part of 18.13 part five. Um, it can also be used on the issuance side. Um, we don't do that, we're not an issuer, obviously, but all the primitives in the library can be used there because, I mean, it's, it's not Android specific. Um, so let's dive into actually what the library is about. Uh, so at its core, it's essentially a, a credential store where you can have one or more credentials. So you could have a mobile driving license, you could have a vaccination document, vehicle registration, and so on. Um, a credential is basically namespace data according to MDoc, a generic property bag if it's a set of claims. So the type, the data type for credential, it's pretty abstract. Um, it's useful for MDOCs. It's also useful for other kind of credentials. We identify credential uh, by a key pair. We call it credential key, where the private part is on the device. The public key can be sent to a third party. Uh, another party could be the issuer. And we use hardware backed at stations. So whenever you convey the key pair, the other part that examines that station has a high degree of certainty that the private part of the key is in a secure area and it cannot leave the device. So that, that gives them a baseline of trust that the credential or whatever you use the key for cannot be cloned, which is very important. A credential also has a number of authentication keys um, in 18.13 part five parlance, they're called device key. Uh, these are the keys used to actually make the attestation at presentation time. Um, so that's what you sign the data with. And the reason we support more than one is to 
is to implement um, the concept of of not leaving any traces. So, so if you use the same key over and over again, the relying party could track your footsteps around. So essentially, we we think of authentication keys as single use, and the idea is when you get your credential from the issuer, you get ten or twenty of them at a time. And you refresh when they run out. Uh, maybe they're time limited. Maybe they only valid for thirty days, which helps with other problems like revocation. Um, so that's the general architecture. And to do this, we defined a couple of abstractions for how can we store data, how can we, how can we do, uh, how do we manage the secure area where the key material is, is implemented. Um, so we have some abstract interfaces, and of course some concrete implementations of them. For the secure area, we have an implementation based on Android Key Store which is uh, an API that's been around for a long time in Android, probably a decade or so, uh, that gives you hardware back key support with remote attestation. Um, we have an implementation of storage, which uses encrypted, which, which stores the data at rest encrypted. Um, and this integrates ni nicely with Android. So in order to use a key, you can require biometric authentication, uh, the user puts in the system end code. Such as to protect the key material, make sure only the device owner can actually present a credential. Um, we also have implementations of these in software uh, that's using the bouncer cast library. And the whole point of doing this is just so we can run it outside Android, mainly so we can run unit tests um, and also to prove that the abstractions work. So in addition to that, we have a big a lot of mdoc support and that's split up into two bits we have all the generic mdoc code which basically handles all the data it can uh, it can pass and generate the device request cbo data structures document request it can deal with the mobile security object or the mso um, can generate and pass those uh, the Android specific parts of it has to do mostly with presentation, present the presentment phase. So we do QR and NFC engagement um, to start the, the transaction. And then data transport is then over BLE, Wi Fi aware, uh, and NFC. And in addition to that, we also have uh, uh, helper classes to do the whole verification and presentation uh, ping pong. All of this implements the ISO standard 1813.5. Um, and it's 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 been to different uh, test events. It's well tested. Um, there are no explicit Android dependencies, as mentioned. You can see all the Android specific bits. It's, it's in its own library. Uh, so you can use all this on the verification side. For example, if you accept NGLs at a web server, you can you can use the device response parser, um, and it will work. Uh, there are no explicit MDOC dependencies. It can You can use the credential, credential store abstraction for other credential formats. Uh, for example, SDJOLT is, is like, I like to call it the, the JSON version of mobile security object. It matches very well to that. Um, the abstractions for the secure area, we like Android Key still quite a bit. It's it's very versatile, it's very robust production quality. But if a wallet app wants to include and use its own secure area, for example, some kind of external device, maybe a cloud back thing where the key is stored, or maybe they have a secure element with a Java card applet uh, that's certified, they can do that. They can just implement the secure area interface which is part of the app, and and then all the rest of the code will use that. So that, that's quite nice. And finally, one philosophy is that we don't just want to give people a library and then your developer is like, oh, how do I actually do this? So, so batteries included. We have production quality, both wallet and, and reader apps that use this, and we keep them up to date. Um, so I'll, I'll talk a little bit about those. So the wallet app, when you build it, and, and anyone can can check out this code from GitHub, build it and run it on your Android phone. 
in five minutes. I mean, so it's it's ready to use. Uh, when you start the wallet app on a fresh install, it looks like this. So you add a new document, and in this case, you have we have different document types. So this is an MDL. Um, we support three other doc types, which are also MDocs: um, vehicle registration, EU, PIT, and vaccination document. Uh, so you'd select your document type, your card off, what name the document has, which secure area to use. In this case, it's Android Keystore. Whether you want user authentication in order to present it, uh, how many authentication keys you want, in this case, 10. How to do the MDoc authentication. There's both uh, MDoc ECDSA and MDoc MAC authentication, which electric curve cryptography curves to use, and so forth. Um, so it really supports a lot of different options. This is not because this is good UI, it's more meant for developers and testing. So if you go to a test event um, and the reader you're interacting with has problems with, say, ED25519, curve 25519 keys, you can create a credential with that and you can test and figure out what it is. So that's really the intent that these applications like showcase the whole library and and it's it's useful also for for testing that the library works as intended so once you create a credential uh, you can actually insert your own data and in my case uh, you can put your own portrait image in and this is what i did here and then you're ready to go there's your driving license you can see in this screenshot there are actually two documents so so that's the whole data. um once you have a document, it says NFC tab with your MDoc reader, and you can just tab it against an MDoc reader and it'll start the transaction. We'll, we'll have a video in a little bit in, in the next slide about that. Um, but before that, let's talk about the verifier, the MDoc reader app we have. So it allows you to specify what documents you want to request. Um, so we have MDL for US transportation, which is the default one, which basically just asks the user for five or six data elements. So the same you would you would need to show if you go through the TSA, for example. But you can also request some of the other document types that I mentioned, um, mobile vehicle registration, vaccination, EU, personal ID. And you can also request multiple documents. That's a request MDL plus MyCard where and it says with linkage that means that it requests a data element in both of them that should have the same value in this case it's the driving license number um, so it's a pretty flexible application um, if the mdl mdoc you're interacting with does not have nfc you can scan the qr code um, like this it's using the camera and you can see the wallet app in the camera area showing a QR code. Um, and once you receive the data, it shows a response with a lot of green check marks. It's probably not the best UI, but again, the audience here is not really, it's not end users, it's uh, developers and people deploying real world identity. Um, there's a bug here that's why it's showing a red cross that uh, the document signing key is not rec recognized. That should be a green thing, but this is what it is when you create demos, sometimes there are bugs, which we fix. You can file issues at GitHub. Uh, so the next slide is showing a video of what a MDL presentation looks like. So we'll just roll the video and I'll, I'll narrate. So we have the very reader on the left and the whole on the right. So the reader selects what you press, this MDL from this presentation. Then we will do the and now there the presentation on the Bluetooth, the folder looks like and Tyler decides to not send family name. Let's send data. Now the user needs to the biometrical to release the device to be signing, send over Bluetooth, and the button to only given name, no family. So that's that's Pretty much it. If you've seen an MDL demonstration and in, in MDL presentation in the past, maybe this wasn't very exciting, but this is what the apps do right now. Um, and I think they do it well. 
Yes, so let's go to the next slide. Slide where it's just talking about what we're planning to work on in the future with this library. So, so right now we're we're focusing on integrating it with uh, on, on integrating the apps with over the internet presentations. That is presentation of your credential not to another device, as you saw just before in the video in person. Now we want to present them to other applications on the same phone, uh, to websites. Um, to that end, uh, uh, Apple actually proposed the mob mobile document request API, I think last year, back in 2022. And we've been working with them uh, quite extensively and also other br browser vendors. Um, to what is now the identity credential WICD, which is Web Incubation uh, Group in W3C. Uh, and so we're working with, with people, with stakeholders in the W3C to have a forum to work on this, um, which is going to start up real soon now. Uh, I've been working with Android and Chrome teams to add native rich APIs which this browser-based API can use, and also so we can convey credentials to other Android apps. Um, hoping to share a lot more about that in ISO and other standardization groups in the near future. Um, we will continue to be active in standards groups. So I'm personally very active in ISO. Um, a lot of work is gonna happen in W3C, uh, go to interoperability events and so forth. Another thing we're working on is a open source Java card uh, applet to facilitate M. presentations when your phone is out of battery, but the phone has enough battery to still power the NFC chip. Um, this already exists on some phones for transit, hotel, payment. Um, the idea is to also do it for identity. This is to inspire enough confidence in in digital identity, so so people can use it even if the phone runs out of battery, which which might be quite important. Um, there's some interesting privacy issues with that because you can't consent to a request because there's no screen. The phone is almost out of battery. So it will probably only work with, uh, if you have read authentication, uh, some authentication of the relying party. Um, Hope to have some more information about that in the near future. We're also working on supporting other credential formats than MDoc in the library itself. And, and finally, we want to add support for other kinds of secure areas than, than just um, Android Keystone. And I think that was about it. So thank you very much for coming to my talk. I hope this was useful. Um, if you use the library, just feel free to file issues on GitHub, uh, send me email. Um, looking forward to hearing from you. Thank you. you can clap. <laughs> so <clears throat> for, for those of you that are interested um, to learn more about the library, uh, you can find it today at this link uh, that Torsten just presented. Um, as I said, we decided to contribute the code also to the Open Wallet Foundation, so soon it will be moving under the Open Wallet project. Um, also, I think if you have any questions, um, David is part of the Technical Advisory Council of the Open Wallet Foundation, which is an open forum anyone can join, um, so you're very welcome to, um, to join those meetings as well, um, or as David mentioned, just file issues on, on GitHub. Thanks, everyone. Thank you very much. And um